Hello everyone and welcome to this Quest 2 settings video. I know it's a bit late, but I couldn't possibly uh, put one out until I knew what I was doing, just for the sake of, you know, more views. <laughs> because, you know, it'll be wasting your time. Um, so now that I've been using the Air Link quite a bit now, uh, I can show you what I'm using for Microsoft Flight Simulator and for other sims as well in terms of sort of what I think works. A lot of this also applies to the link cable because one thing I have found and that is air link and the link cable, the performance and the way I guess the quest behaves uh, in different sims is kind of the same to be honest. I think the only thing you're really uh, going to be benefiting from is the lack of a cable. Um, so you know, please bear in mind that I don't think it really gives you any extra performance. I don't think. Some people think it's smoother than the uh, link cable. I think it's pretty much about the same. But anyway, one thing I just want to uh, point out first of all, and that make sure that your router, if I'll overlay an image of where mine is, is very close, I mean properly close to your computer. In my case, mine's on top of it. Uh, and that your computer, it's wired into it, uh, you know, properly with an Ethernet cable. I wouldn't recommend uh, using it wirelessly. I, f I think a few people have fallen down on that one. So make sure also that you are wired up to the 5 gigahertz connection. You can mess around with your router settings and all the other, you know, not non-important stuff like Netflix and all your kids, uh, you know, n internet things. You can put that on a separate network to leave that one free. Uh, that way the bandwidth will perform better, I think. That's what I've done anyway. So, we're back now in Oculus Home environment. Do you know what? I've got to say, the Air Link capabilities of this headset, the Quest 2 in general, is one hell of a device. But unfortunately, it falls down when it comes to... Let's see if we can do a bit of shooting here while I'm talking. Oh, hang on. Joe, I haven't used this for ages. It falls down when you're basically using flight sims. The Reverb G2 is better. My aim is rubbish, look at that, that's terrible. But, you know, I've gotta say, the Quest 2 works really well with a number of different applications on Airlink. It's quite remarkable. And I even go downstairs away from my router and play Saints and Sinners in, the, in my big sort of uh, living room, which is fantastic. But anyway, let's get to the settings here. So I'll click this button here. We're going to go to the uh, Air Link, which is this here. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about the Air Link bitrate. I've messed around with it being fixed. I've also messed around with dynamic mode. In this case, which is very rare <laughs> these days with software, I think personally that dynamic mode is really well done. The Oculus team have done a fantastic job here. Automatically adjust the bitrate to maintain performance based on your network conditions. I find that runs really well. I've tried it fixed and I actually get, um, it does affect my performance. So I keep that in dynamic mode, guys. Please let me know in the comments if your settings are different than that, but I do find that works really well. My internet connection, by the way, uh, isn't particularly great. Uh, so I find that works really well. Right, so with that being said, I'm now going to go out of this uh, sort of home environment and back to my settings on my desktop to let you know what I've done there. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so welcome back. We're in the Oculus home environment. And I just want to quickly make sure that you do know this, <laughs> that the Air Link, you need to enable this in the beta tab, right, before it'll even work. Consider it, I guess, like a Bluetooth connection. I don't know whether that's how it works. I don't think it does. But it's a bit like, you know, you switch this on and it will stay active for 24 hours. And that's how your headset finds your computer. Obviously, you need to be running uh, version 2.8 or 2.9. Uh, no uh, sort of earlier than that. Otherwise, this won't work at all. But I think by now, everybody's upgraded. I'm pretty certain. So we're going to go into devices at this point. And I'm going to show you my settings here on the graphics preferences. This may surprise you, okay? Because I'm running a very, very beefy computer. It's a 3090 graphics card. But I use the automated recommended settings. Again, because of the way Oculus have done such a great job with sort of being quite realistic with what your computer can handle, this is what I'm using. I'm, I'm using 80 hertz mode because I find the difference between 90 hertz and 80 hertz is very you know, very slight. In fact, I don't really notice any difference, but 72 hertz 
it's pretty awful. So I don't use the recommended there. But I do feel that extra 10 hertz just gives my computer a little more breathing space. The frame rate can go that little bit lower. Instead of 30 frames per second motion projection, reprojection, sorry, I can get down to 27 or even 18 frames per second if you want to go too crazy, but we'll get into that in a moment. Now, I need to make sure that you're aware that this is not the uh, settings that you must use. It's going to be different depending on whether you're running a 2080 Ti or 1080 Ti card. Um, this will be a different figure, but I do recommend that you run this automated uh, slider simply because I think, okay, that the performance is worse when you up this to maximum. So I could, if I wanted to, go 90 hertz. I've tried it at this, guys. I've tried it at the sort of maximum resolution, and it hurts my computer it really does even my 3090 card it doesn't like it um so what i recommend is you run 80 hertz recommended there we go and then use the oculus tray tool i'll have this linked in the description below and somewhere let's have a look where am i oculus tray tool there you are this little program here is amazing and i do some people say they don't use it anymore but I still think it's definitely worth it. Now, I've got everything completely default on purpose because I'm going to show you what settings I use. So, start with the super sampling. This is the key. I find that super sampling in the tray tool is less hurty <laughs> on frame rate than using the native resolution, okay? So, if you have that recommended, I think the best sort of uh, super sampling rate for this is to be very careful because this is very powerful, okay? And it will bring your computer to its knees very quickly. So run 1.1 and just kind of just gradually go up to where you think, you know, the clarity is decent enough and the, fr the frame rate stays constant. For me, I'm able to get away with 1.3 super sampling with those recommended, where are you? You've gone again, uh, sort of resolution there. But don't be afraid to go back a little bit more. Even 1.1 makes a difference. Uh, so that's what I'm running. In terms of the ASW, now, guys, if it's ASW or motion smoothing or motion reprojection, it's all the same thing. Oh, looks like the Oculus Link stopped working because it's got bored because I'm not using it. That's fine. It's all the same thing. It's adding additional frames, uh, sort of fake frames. Yes, thank you. Go away. <laughs> Uh, in order to maintain a sort of perceived native resolution, in this case, 80 hertz, so it's 80 frame rate, uh, frames per second, which we're never going to run in any sim, to be honest, in VR right now, even with a 3090 card. So I recommend, again, that you change this to and pl have a play with it. Some people are running 80 hertz mode, 18 hertz mode. To be honest, it's so wavy and so uncomfortable, I don't like it. I actually either prefer 30 hertz or what I think is the best for me, I leave this on adaptive so that in really terrible areas, say London on ultra settings, it may go down to that 18 hertz sort of momentarily, but then shoot back up to 30. But it has that ability to be, what it says on the tin, adaptive. I find that's very useful. So I have my ASW on adaptive. Now, the mirror field of view multiplier. A lot of people run... Uh, a 0.7, which basically uh, pulls in the field of view ever so slightly, uh, that has a massive impact on performance. You get a lot of frames back. But I know a lot of you guys out there do not like that because field of view is so important. Um, so that, again, is up to you. But have a play around with it. But it does make a difference. Personally, I leave that at zero. You know, I've kind of used both settings and I prefer it at zero because I can run that. But with my 1080 Ti machine, which I have used with Link, um, and it doesn't run that well, if I'm honest, uh, I think it, you know it's, it's maximizing what that car can do at this point. But I do run that at 0.7. I do have a video on that on the channel as well, and it does make a difference. Now, make sure you're running the latest Oculus Tray tool. Um, in fact, I just updated it because it let me know at the bottom here, there's a tab that says Update Found. It's very easy to do that. So, what else do I use? I'll keep all that the same, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Oculus Link. I actually use this preset here uh, of 
a GTX 1080 RTX 2080 Plus. This is the key thing, right, guys? You need to be running. This is brilliant, actually. And thank you for the trade tool, uh, the guys who run it. You, you, you know, you're, what you're doing for the community is amazing. If you, you know, and I would recommend donating to them as well. Uh, but with the latest update, you can now change the bit rate to zero. This is really important, guys, okay? Because if you're running an NVIDIA card, and most of you probably are, this will affect you. You need to make sure the bit rate is at zero, otherwise you're gonna get very laggy performance when you're using the air link. Okay, so now we've got that sorted out, let's go into the sim to show you my settings. So here we are in the sim, these are my current settings with the air link and they are exactly the same as the Reverb G2. By the way, I have uh, recently up the object level of detail to 200 now because I find the auto imagery uh, seems to be better higher up. You get a better resolution. Whether that's something that uh, I've imagined or not, I don't know. But uh, I, I like to set that 200, but it is quite high. Please bear in mind, guys, these settings are extremely high for VR because of my computer. I'm now going to show you what I run with my 1080 Ti machine, okay, uh, with the 8600K. I'm just going to adjust these now. I have render scale 70%, I have terrain level detail 90, terrain vector medium, buildings medium, trees low, because that by the way trees is a hefty one, grass and bushes I actually have off completely because that's another one, believe it or not that does rob you of frame rate, we're now going to take this back to 80%, volumetric clouds medium, uh, texture resolution, I set that to ultra because the 1080 Ti card still has 12 gigs of VRAM, which is excellent. Uh, AF, the filtering, I actually take that back to eight times. Everything else, let's have a look here, it's pretty much the same here. Uh, what, no, it isn't actually. Water waves, take that down to low. And reflections, have that off completely. Light shafts are off. Bloom is off. And cockpit refresh rate is medium. There, they are my settings right now for my 8600K 1080 Ti machine, which I don't use that often these days, if I'm honest. Uh, I mainly use it for recording. But if you are listening to this video and you have a sort of medium to low spec computer, try those settings out. I find they work really well with the Air Link. So really, the last bit is my NVIDIA settings, and this is something that I find very interesting. At the moment, I am still running the 457-30 driver. It, it just works really well for VR, simply because of its consistency with the frame rate. Although, I have found that for the Quest 2, for the 30 series cars, particularly for mine, uh, the decoding, it's it runs better with the latest uh, NVIDIA driver, which is the 466-27. I think that's because it just has a few software tweaks for the Oculus users for that decoding information. So if I do use the Quest 2 for a fair amount of time, I will actually upgrade to that drive and then go back again, which is really annoying. I mean, it does run okay with the 457-3, but for, you know, for my experience, I do find that this latest driver works best. In terms of my settings, well, they're exactly the same as it was before, to be honest, but I'll show you in case you don't know. Manage 3D settings. I actually, I don't even have a profile anymore for Microsoft Flight Simulator. All I run is literally uh, texture filter quality on performance. I have my power management mode at optimum power because if I have that at maximum performance, I find it stutters. And that is it. That is my Quest 2 Air Link setup guide as of the 10th of <laughs> May 2021 on a Monday. It might change by Tuesday the 11th, but who knows? <laughs> you know what it's like, guys, but hopefully that's at some help to you. And uh, please let me know in the comments uh, what you're running. And if I've missed anything, I'll add it in a separate video. Take care and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now.